when it started out, <coughs> it's a group of people get to know that. This thing is free. Now they have a new one thing to do with four and they have other variations of it. We go to 14 and 4 and it's all in this program. Yes, it's all in this program. Yes, it's all in this program. And then it's a completely different Please place your cell phones on silent so that we don't disturb anybody. And uh, let's see, one, two, three, four brief announcements. Wednesday, June 11th, begins our summer session of Intro to Judaism and a Touch of Hebrew at 6.30 and 7.30, respectively. If you would like to attend the classes, you can talk to me or Beth Bowman, I wish you went, she's here, uh, either tonight or you can call the temple on Monday. On Friday, June 20th, is our next Shabbat Biyachad, our community Shabbat with dinner and service. We hope you'll join us for that special evening. Bring wine and a corkscrew to share with your friends or your family. CNT members, $12 per person or $40 for a family of four. Next Gen members are also $12 per person. And if you are not yet a member, it is $18 per person or $60 for a family of four. Children six and under are free. And again, please contact the temple office to respond, or you can pay online. And then the following Friday, 
June 27th. Close your ears. June 27th, we have to say goodbye to our wonderful Rabbi Ruben, who's moving back home to Arizona. Happy for her, sad for us. Services that evening will be at 7, and we invite everyone to come and join us in bidding her farewell. And our next newsletter will be out this coming Friday, or I'm sorry, Friday of next week, and it will have all of the information for your summer plans. Thank you, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.
um, come join us. There's more people that are involved with this, so anyway, the brave soul will come on up. And join us for Kiddush and Motsi.
We turn now to page 263 for the Hatsi Cottage, 263. <laughs>
stand together for the tefillah on page 273.
when we come together as a community, we, we go from being just individuals to a congregation, a group where we bring each other strength during our times of need. And now we think of those in our lives who are in need of our blessings of healing, our strength to help them get through what they may be going to life's challenges and for ourselves as our loved ones are going through those things. We think of those who are who need healing of body, mind, or spirit. If you would like to say the name of a loved one who is in need of a Misha Bera, a healing prayer, please stand. Say the names aloud. We stand together as a united community to sing the Misha Be'erach on page in the middle of page 371. <laughs> built in the desert 
was this physical three-dimensional model of the spiritual architecture of the soul. So it was the architecture of humankind. The temple consisted of numerous domains, chambers, and vessels, each of those corresponding to another element of the inner life of man and illustrating that elements function and purpose. That elements function and purpose. Well, this week, we read Parshat Behalotecha. The portion opens with instructions for Aaron, the high priest, Moses' brother, and it says, God says, speak to Aaron and say to him, when you raise up the lamps, the seven lamps shall cast their light toward the face of the menorah. The menorah. The seven branch golden candelabra was kindled each day in the Mishkan and later in the temple in Jerusalem. If the temple was the spiritual architecture of the soul, the menorah represents man's potential to kindle lamps, to generate sources of illumination within his own self, in his fellow man, and in all the material resources around us. The great commentator Rashi said that Aaron was required to kindle the lamp until the flame raise, rises by itself on its own accord. <clears throat> the lights of the menorah are symbolic of the Jewish soul. The word behalotecha, the name of our portion, means raise up. It's used rather than kindle or light because Aaron's task was to raise up every soul, to bring out the great potential within each individual. The menorah's lights are usually referred to as its nerot, lamps. Here, though, Rashi uses the word shalhevet, which means flame. While the term nerot can apply to both lit and unlit lamps, shalhevet means a live, light-producing flame. Actually, there were many hours of the day that the menorah's lamps were without flames because each morning the lamps had to be cleaned, filled with the purest olive oil, and then given brand new wicks. In this state, they stood most of the day awaiting for Aaron or the high priest who came to kindle them in mid-afternoon. In those interim hours, the lamp was in its most complete and perfect state, we would say, because it was clean, it was perfect. Its gold, pristine, its wicks were perfectly fresh and filled to capacity with that finest olive oil. Nothing of substance was lacking. Indeed, lighting is only solely its luster. It charred its wick and used up its fuel and all of the, it, it gave it a different color. But in its unlit state, the lamp was dark. Its luminary potential <coughs> locked within. It might have been perfect in itself, but it was of no benefit to the outside. Like the menorah, a person can be a nair, a light, without a shalhebet, without that life. A lamp without the flame. We constantly are striving for personal perfection and may even have an, a beautiful vessel, a fine-tuned talents and abundant potentials. But the true purpose of life is to be that blazing lamp, to ignite one's talents and potentials so that then they illuminate all those surrounding us. This is why the menorah was so important to God and was focused on in this Torah portion. The menorah teaches us that the goal of personal perfection alone will never be enough to satisfy, satisfy the striving of our soul. It's in our nature to be a flame, an illumination to our surroundings. 
But the menorah could not light itself, and neither can a person. We, like the menorah, require a fire, an external source of energy to set it aglow. Each of us can be like Aaron and act as lamp lighters, whether it's in the endeavor to ignite our own potentials or to ignite the lamp in our fellow man or to create other lights out of the materials of our environments. The objective for all of us must be to generate a flame which rises on its own. Tonight, as we gaze at the Shabbat candles, may their light spark a new light within each of us that will help to brighten the world. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat.
we turn our thoughts now to loved ones who have been taken from us, those who have recently been laid to rest in our community in the first Shiva seven days or the first Shloshim 30 days. We remember Bob Carter, Richard Ritter, Amy Rushing, Edward Grossman, Zachary Freeman, Lance Brown, Carla Jonas, Clarice Birnbaum, Marion Rosen Schlesinger, Marty Dreitzer. We also remember those whose yurt sites occur at this time. Lena Axelrod, Morris Aronoff, Nathan Beller, David Blumenfeld, Bessie Chaikin, Benjamin Cohen, Esther Cohen, Lena Cohen, Essie Kotler, Abraham Figgeltner, William Fine, Milton Freed, Esther Gennon, Frida Glansberg, Solomon Goldberg, Robert Golovner, Barbara Greenspun, Victor Harper, Paul Ingber, Al Kempenick, Kempenick Jr., Julius Klatsman, Natalie Kranitz, Kenneth Levitt, Marilyn Mayer, Irving Myers, Stanley Navis, Rose Nisberg, Barney Ostrowski, Helene Premselar, Shana Rosenberg, Alexander Selnick, Charlotte Scherter, Rose Cookie Scarro, Dora Tarnofsky, Harry Tenenbaum, Shirley Unger, Sandy Walkman, Howard Walkman, Thelma Weidenfeld, Siegfried Wexler, Betty Wexler, Gail Wilk, Nisim Yachbes. And any names which you would like to add, please stand. <coughs> those names and many more we hold in our hearts. We recite the Kaddish Shaton, which can be found on page 598. We stand together. Yudgadal Yit farah vish kabah 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 vish May their memories always be a blessing. And please be seated. Thank you to everyone for sharing your Shabbat with us. We do have an Oneg after our service, so um, please join us for that. And we will conclude with a prayer for peace. I just want to say thank you to Max. for ourselves, for our community, and for everyone in the world. Oh, my God, 647.